Hello to the Chess Chicas and the Chess Chicas. Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about one of the most commonly occurring pawn structures and that's a very important point to deliver right here in the beginning that it's one of the most common ones and that's gonna be none other than the IQP. Now this topic has been discussed so much and there is so much material available about it that you would be shocked uh, if I could tell you anything new about it. And yet, I really do think that it is an important time to clear up the fog a little bit about the isolated pawn, especially um, 2000 rating points and below. And the reason for this is the following. In the past, I don't know, six months or, do or so, I came across at least five chess lessons, but perhaps more where we would analyze a position with student, we would come across something similar to what's on the board, I just randomly put it up there, and uh, we would talk about uh, a line, let's say, DC, bishop takes, C takes, D4, and we would be like, okay, so how should we retake on D4? I mean, there are all kinds of possibilities. What, what do you think we should do? Well, definitely not pawn, comes the response to which I'm going like, why ever not? Oh, because that's an IQP. Okay, and? Then they, they are confused, like as if I am the one who is asking some <laughs> out of the ordinary type of thing, and they go like, well, that's a weakness. And this is the mentality that is so, so, so very common on club level, and I don't understand where this comes from. It is this utter same exactly the same utter nonsense um which is the oh double pawns are bad no yes sometimes sometimes they aren't um but you definitely can't say that they are bad and the same goes for an isolated that that's a weakness no it's not it can be one but if i take back with the pawn this is definitely not weak well by what measure is it weak you can't even attack it in the next 10 moves like and, and so on the grounds of, ooh, isolated pawns are weak, we just go like, no, I don't do that. So I take back with the knight and we are surprised that the position becomes dead equal and we have no plans and we have got nothing really to, to play for. Um, so let's put this uh, in its right place. The isolated pawn structure, I never know if it's isolated pawn, pawn structure or isolated pawn structure. I feel like if I say the latter, I'm omitting a word. Anyway, so this pawn structure is a peculiar one because it really thrives on imbalance. Nothing is going to be matching or symmetrical anymore on the board and off the board, so to speak, when we discuss the pros and cons. Obviously, the pawn structure is now not symmetrical and in fact is compromised. That is definitely a correct observation because the D pawn cannot be protected by another pawn, hence it's isolated. On the other hand, that is the only central pawn on the board. And that's a great asset because it allows us more space and also potential outposts in the center and central breaks. And all of a sudden we are even Steven. There are baddies, there are goodies, and they are after level. And each and every position with an isolated pawn um, will have to be um, evaluated on their individual merit. And you look at what's good, what's bad, and then you make a call. And that's how it should be with almost everything in chess anyway. So just go like, oh, I don't want to retake with the pawn because that's IQP. It's like, yeah, and that's great, isn't it? And the greatest testament to this, by the way, is like with the isolated pawn, there is this strange phenomenon that uh, that particular pawn structure is the easiest one to divide players into two groups. Usually the attackers like to pick to play with the isolated pawn and the more positionally minded, uh, more classical, ah, uh, classical is not the right way, the more positionally minded players tend to choose to play against the isolated queen pawn. But that being said, that doesn't mean that they always avoid it at all cost. Kramnik scored some absolutely insane victories with the isolated pawn. So did Karpov. In fact, very last video I posted, right, in the book review, hello, Karpov game, like the greatest positional mastermind that ever lived, perhaps, 
Um, and yeah, he plays on both sides of the IQP. So once again, individual merit, this is the key. Let me explain this to you through two real examples. Okay, so here is the first. Two English legends, Raymond Keane against Anthony Miles. Probably the most famous game Raymond Keane ever played. Um, the opening is the Tarash, which is one of the myriad of openings that can lead to isolated uh, pawn structures. By the way, the very fact that I can name like 20 openings from the top of my head that allows the IQP or the isolated pawn structure to occur should by default suggest that, that can't be such a bad thing if there are like a myriad of openings that forcingly lead us to that pawn structure. Anyway, so let's have a look. Takes, knight takes. Bishop takes. By the way, just I can't help but show it to you so that if black takes back with the pawn, then almost inevitably we are going to end up with black having the IQP and nothing wrong there with that. So, um, in the game, however, Mars took back with the knight. And then he took on d4 and ta-da, now it's white who has got the IQP. Bishop e7, castles, castles. Now, I don't really want to get into the, the nitty-gritty of the strategies of what to do and what not to do when IQP. This has been already covered. Briefly, I'm just going to mention as much. White's main um, objective is to avoid trades and to try to create an attack. Or I should rather say the side with the uh, isolated pawn usually wants to avoid trades and usually is aiming to build on the um, freedom of pieces, greater mobility, create an attack, try to um, organize some sort of initiative. On the flip side, if you are playing against the IQP, you are looking to trade, you are looking to simplify, you want endgame. That's about it. So let's see what happens. Knight f6 drops back. Um, it is an old theoretical line, a little bit counterintuitive in light of what I just said, but we'll let this slide now for the time being. Knight b4, bishop b1, avoid, uh, avoiding the trade, keeping the bishop. Knight, uh, b6, knight e5. See, this is what I was talking about earlier, that isolated pawn gives you a nicely protected outpost in the center. Bishop b7, rook e3. Note how white managed to keep all four miners on the board, plus now the rook is coming into the fray for a classic rook lift. The black king is beginning to get nervous. G6 was played, and so far so good. No mistakes have been made um, in particular. Rook G3, however, after rook C8, now things are about to get dicey. Bishop H6 was played, and rook E8 here is a game-losing mistake. Because now white gets to kick this knight. And after knight c6, now in comes the fury. Um, and that is the very typical uh, ultimate IQP dream. When we build up an attack, all of our pieces are pointing at the enemy king. No trades have taken place. And clearly black did not quite manage to uh, develop some sort of a, a cooperation and harmony amongst uh, the pieces. And so king went after it like... He was very keen on this attack. Knight takes g6, pawn takes, bishop takes, f takes, and queen b1. Now you would think that he is being cute here with queen b1 because queen d3 and queen d2 would have done the trick as well with the idea of hitting g6, but wrong, wrong, wrong. Queen d3 immediately loses to knight e5. Note the pin. And more subtle and therefore more beautiful, is that even queen c2 fails to knight e5, when after d knight e4, now this pin is becoming quite a nuisance, and although white still has a bit of play here, according to the machine, it's better not to fall for any of the above, play queen b1, deny all these uh, dirty jumps, and now mass when knight e5 takes a knight e4, but now neither of the pins are on, so we can simply eliminate the knight on e4 and can conclude this beautiful game with a checkmate attack. So that's how you play on the back of the IQP, and you take on it like a trooper you are. Like, there is nothing bad about white's position. It's perfectly fine. You just need to understand what you want to do, what strategies you want to follow, and what is it that you want to disallow from your opponent 
to accomplish. Now, I'm only going to be fair if I show you a counterexample, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you. And actually, I called upon Karpov. I'm going to now do so again. In fact, in this game, he's playing uh, with the black pieces. One of the most famous chess game that was ever played for the topic of IQP is this game where he plays against Korchnoi uh, in their World Championship match. And actually, Korchnoi makes a tragic mistake further down the track. By the way, note that this looks remarkably similar to the first example I showed you. And here, white is totally fine. There's no worries. Like the IQP means absolutely nothing. It's not a plus, it's not a minus. It's just a normal thing to deal with and live with once again, as long as we know what we are doing. Castles, knight h5. Smart dude. He told me, he knows what I was talking about. Trade pieces. Trade, trade, taking back with the knight, because the last strategy that I didn't tell you, which is very, very important too, is to blockade the isolated pawn, meaning putting pieces in front of it so that it cannot freely advance. Bishop b3, knight f6. The blockaders are coming back. Knight e5, bishop d7. Now, you would normally not want to trade knight for bishop, because we, trade, uh, we value bishops higher, but there is a greater concept here at play or a higher level of importance which is that we want to trade so that we can trade down to an endgame. Korchnoi for the time being resists. Rook c8. Knight e4. Nay 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 buddy. That is your trade. Instead rook e1 or rook d1 would have been better building the tension rather than trading down. Knight e4. Mistake. Knight takes queen takes bishop c6. And Karpov goes after it like an absolute champion. And now, oopsie daisies, and I pressed the wrong button. So takes, takes. Now the rooks are, uh, the rook trade is on. Um, rook takes, I think, would have been best here for white. When after knight takes, uh, white can get rid of with the IQP. And black's best is b takes c6. When the engine argues that although there are two isolated pawns on the board, the d4 one is easier to attack and target than the c6 one and therefore still a slight edge to black. I really think that Korchner should have done this, but he instead went rook c3 and now we are just headed for a tragic case of a IQP because there are already three pairs of minor pieces off, gone completely from the board and that bodes really, really badly for white. Queen and e1. Queen d7, rook, 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 tripling up. And now it is genuinely weak, right? And the reason for that is because there are no minor pieces on the board. And so I can pile up like this. There's no way on earth that with four pairs of minor pieces, you get to do this. That just is not happening. Because these big pieces would be attacked constantly. Queen c6, queen f4. And this is where Korchno is going to make a horrendous mistake. And that is this trade. This move has been talked a lot about in various chess literature and frankly it is almost like tantamount to resignation because now the long-term plan of tripling up on the pawn and then playing e5 is unstoppable. So this is your dream scenario. This is what you want when you are playing against the IQP. I will show you how it ended very quickly. So Korchnoi had to find a move to stop e5 and that just created further weaknesses. Now the white king is quite exposed and that is going to become a factor. b5 killing the rook. Now we are threatening to penetrate via the c file. Take queen a3. Um, trying to recuperate the pawn. But now comes the very, very unpleasant surprise soon with e5. Queen b5 threatens to penetrate on e2. Had to be stopped. And then e5 is the decisive break. This is already not so much a typical theme of the IQP. Um, here there are many, many other factors at play. But in the end, poor Korchnoi's king got way too exposed. And uh, yeah, now this is the isolated pawn for white again, quite ironically. Um, the rook is still hanging though. And white, black, excuse me, has got various ways to come in to finish the king off on g2 so in a matter of few more moves this game was over and uh yeah this is when Co uh, Korchnoi gave up because his rook is a corner so long story short do not ever reject a scenario on your board that would lead to an iqp 
just because it's a, or a rather an isolated pawn just because it's isolated. That by itself is a perfectly useless piece of information for you to work with because that can still be good or bad. So to reject that is like, I, I can't even give you an analogy or a comparison. It's like saying that, oh, I don't want to fiance to my bishop, it's bad. No, it's not. Like there are 5 million openings that do that. And there is another 5 million where it would be terrible to do that. So apply your knowledge of the IQP or rather the um, isolated pawn and figure out if the scenario you are entering is likely to give you uh, initiative, free piece play or whether it's likely to lead to an endgame scenario. But do not ever say, please, please, for the love of God, that oh, an IQP is just like an isolated pawn. Oh, that's bad because it's weak. It's so contextual that you can't make statements like that. And in fact, if you think about it, I'm just going to do a very quick um, showcase. Oh, by the way, I just accidentally revealed there for a second the message. Um, we did hit 30,000. And for the second time of my YouTubing life, um, I was recognized not on the street, but in a bushwalking uh, journey. I went for a walk and uh, yeah, Hayden. Legend you are, matey. Thank you so much for that long message too. I will get back to you. But yeah, shout out to Hayden who recognized me and stopped me, in fact, on my walk. And I'm like, oh, I know you. You are the YouTuber guy. Second time. Very, very, very humbling. So yeah. Uh, anyway, back to what I was going to tell you if I could find an analysis board. A myriad of openings, right? So, okay, let's go. Exchange French. Take, take, C4. After take, take, there is your IQP myriad of games have been played for this. But let's stick with the French. Let's go Tarash. C5, take, take. This is considered to be the safest and the best way to equalize against the knight d2 French. No less. Let's go Karokan. Karokan Panov. Takes, takes c4. And again, after e6, knight f3, bishop b4 takes, knight takes, isolated pawn. After bishop e7, takes, takes, isolated pawn. What else is there? Um, tarash. We already talked about the Tarash, in fact. That is uh, one of the most common one because he both sides can end up with an IQP, as per already shown to you during the Raymond Keen game. But I'll show you something better, even. Nimzo. 7,000 lines of the Nimzo Indian can end up in a... Uh, IQP, I mean, once you see this pawn tension, you already know it. And what's really cool about it, just like in the Tarash, is that both sides can have isolated pawns. And so, once again, don't fear it, don't avoid it, embrace it. Embrace it, men or ladies, because it's a really awesome, fun pawn structure to play on both sides. I really enjoy playing both with it and against it. Because as soon as you understand what's going on, it's just another layer of knowledge that, you know, you should utilize and exploit to your benefit. As opposed to, oh, isolated pawn is weak, double pawns are bad. It's like, no, chess has a lot more to it than making such basic statements and try to develop some kind of a style or thinking around it. It is just harmful and it prevents you from having so much fun with so many really, really cool openings. So folks, isolated pawn, embrace it. Don't fear it. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, shout out to Hayden. Please don't forget to sub, to like, to super thank me if you can. Please leave a comment down below and I will be back with the next video soon.